Hello, welcome back to my Allen Bradley PLC test bench. Today I'm going to show you how to change the fuses in a 1756OA16 series 3.2 output module. Now, you would think that these fuses would be easy to change because this is Allen Bradley, but they're not. They have one fuse at the bottom here, which is for the bottom eight channels. The second fuse is underneath this cover, right about here, and to get at it you take out these two screws, remember this is a version 3.2, and you remove this cover and you pull it off. Sounds real simple. The problem being this plastic cap that's over top of your indicators has to come off also, and it's a little tricky to get it off without breaking it which I've, I can see people doing quite easily because you have to be very patient on how to get it off. So what we'll do is we'll get uh, swapped around here so that you can see what I'm doing on the workbench and I'll show you the steps to do to take it. Now the fuses are a 3.15 amp 250 volt and the original ones were made by Mersen, M-E-R-S-E-N they're available at various distributors and the price ranges anywhere between $2 US and $18 US depending on where you look for them. So it may be something you want to get a box of them so that you've got them because blowing, blowing fuses on output modules, driving solenoid valves or whatever is going to happen. So we'll just, like I say, we'll get set up and be right back. Okay, so before I uh, start pulling this apart, here here's our card in the mod, in the chassis. It's all wired up, and as you can see on the top right here, it says fuse. Now the top indicator, there's two fuse indicators, top and bottom, and your all your status lights. Now the OK light is on because the module itself is good, but the fuse light is on because it's got one blow and fuse. So the top light is for the center fuse, the bottom light is for the fuse at the, at the bottom of the module which is really easy to get out and change. So what we'll do is I'll uh, just reposition here so you can see it as I work on the module and be right back. Okay so here's our package of fuses like I say, the Mersen fuses, it's a GSF-15-0A16 slash which is a 20 5 millimeter diameter, 20 millimeter long slow blow fuse and high, it's also called a time lag high. So if we look at the fuse just because open this up. There they are. Those are the kinds of fuses that should be in your module to keep the warranty and to protect your module. Okay, so we'll just reposition this a little bit. Refocus there. Okay, so here's the tools you need to change the fuse. The screwdrivers are pretty straightforward tiny little pliers are so that you can grip the fuse because it's inside of all those components and then you also need a piece of flat metal now this one it's kind of hard to see here uh, put it on this piece of paper this is a piece of flat metal that came with my toolbox it's very narrow it's very flexible is for taking the opening the locks on my toolbox and uh, getting the drawers out. So what you have to do to get this plastic cover off, because if you take off the two screws here, and there's only two screws on this module, whereas the version two had four screws and a metal post in between. This version and it's really hard to see, it'll be easier to see once we get it apart. This piece goes underneath here 
this piece goes under underneath here. You can't. Uh, sorry about that. This side goes underneath here. This side goes underneath there. You can't take these plates off once you've taken the screws out. You have to take this snap cap off. So, what we'll do, there's on the two sides, this side, your clip is right there. This side, your clip is at the front. And it's, it's a little hook. So what you have to do is take your small screwdriver and get it up in there and turn it so that the blade lifts and puts a space there. Take your piece of flat uh, spring metal. Now, I haven't tried it because I don't have any uh, narrow feeler gauges, but you could do the same thing with a feeler gauge. And you have to push it up in there so that it's lifts, it uh, gives a sliding surface for that um, piece of plastic. On this side, again, you take your screwdriver and you see right there, you can lift that up just gently and kind of move it up. Once it starts to move, you can grasp it with your fingers and pull it off. But if you don't have a piece of metal like this, you got to be careful because you, the, this is just like plastic and it breaks easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you can take and you can get this off. Now this this one here, be careful when you lever it around, unhook it. It's got hooks here that fit into these holes and also when you're reassembling you have to be able to get the legs properly lined up. If they don't line up you won't get it back together. So we turn it around this way and I'll get it back in the middle there so you can see it. Probably we'll just zoom down a bit. So here is, yep, you can see it. Here is our fuse that is that is burnt out. Take your small electronics pliers, reach in, hold onto the module, grasp the fuse, and pull it out and off to the side. Now you can see on this end that someone has replaced that fuse at some point and they put a standard glass fuse in which is not a slow blow. So we have it open, we'll change both of them. Take your fuse, standard little, little fuse, the middle one again. You're going to need your yeah, need your pliers to be able to get it get the fuse in there because it's way down in there. Okay, so the fuse is in. We're ready to reassemble. But before you reassemble, you set it up at an angle here so that you can see all of these components inside. Just down just a bit. Okay. So you see we've got the triax, we've got SCRs, we've got all kinds of resistors. Have a look at your alignment of your your triax. Make sure they they've got lots of airspace around them or as much as possible with this. And make sure all your resistors are are straight and not touching each other. Because if you have to get in there with a with a screwdriver to lift that fuse out, you're going to move those resistors. So you want them back where they're um, safe in their position, that you can get it. Uh, it's not going to short out. So this side plate stays on the whole time. It's all, this side plate actually 
goes all the way around on there. So to get that off, you've got to pry and wiggle and get things off. So we'll just back the uh, view off a little bit so that you can see easier. Now we reassemble. You put your little hooks here, go into your two little holes here. And you can see when you look that you got the notches there. Now if you do not you have to be careful, you have to get those lined up exactly. Just gotta kind of play it, wiggle it around with your fingers. And once it's together like that, turn it back over and put your two fuses, your two um, screws in, which holds the two halves together. Now your side plates are secure on the module. Now you have to replace your plastic cover on the front of your, your module here. So to do that, there's this little locking bar here. What this is for is to lock the wiring arm onto the module when it's installed. Make sure that it's in there flat and I find it's easier if it's flush on this end hold it upside down like this take your module slide it in to the module because otherwise gravity will take over and flop that out and then you'll have to start again from scratch so there we are there's the procedure to change a fuse in a version 3.2 Allen Bradley 1756 OA16 output module. Really takes way too much time, but that's just the way these guys designed it, and there's nothing any of us can do about it. So, we'll put this module back into the chassis. Okay, so now we'll put our module back into the chassis which you can do while it's live and hook up our wiring arm turn on our 110 volt power and we can see we don't have any output lights or uh, fuse lights on we turn on our switch to make it go on and off and we're done that's quite the procedure for changing a tiny little fuse it goes right there. There we go. Um, but that's the way these guys, Alan Bradley Rockwell, designed it. There's nothing any of us can do. So, anyhow, thanks a lot for watching this. Uh, hopefully, you found it informative and come back anytime you want. To, I'll try and get more uh, videos posted here in the next little while. Have a great day.